Coach, um, yep. what, are, what are some of the uh, issues that the Panthers present with, you know, I guess they've changed a lot since the, the beginning of the season? They have. They run the ball really well. Mm -hmm. Offensive line is playing together as a group really well. Hubbard is, uh, those two backs, Hubbard and Sanders, man, they, they're, um, they're running well. They really are downhill, um, physical. Um, but the, the the biggest thing is that you know they, they're committed to it. You know they're you, you know we're gonna they're gonna try to run it as much as they possibly can. So that's that's probably the biggest change is they stayed with it. You know they're consistently running it, um, and uh, they're playing pretty in the run game. They're, they're playing really well right now. And uh, some of the guys were saying that the quarterback's running a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Forty eight sacks would make you know, yeah. Oh, he's he's uh, he's elusive back there. Um, you know, it's been uh, last couple games. You know, you're watching him, and he's extending drives on you know third and six, third and seven. He's getting the first down, keeping them on the field, um, moving around more than when the first game than we saw him. You know, so that that probably those two things are the biggest change in, of the offense that we've seen. What sort of challenges has your dwindling defensive tackle depth given you? Well, obviously, we'd like to have the guys, you know, out there for the whole year. But we also understand that NFL, it's a long season. And so we've had some guys have been in the program now and, and developed and, you know, and have played some snaps. And early in the year, we did. Um, and so that's that's helped. Um, and so, look, it's just next man up mentality. You can't, you know, it's really nothing to do other than get the guys ready to play. Um, so we spent a good part of the day yesterday. Today will be the same thing tomorrow and, you know, go out there and, and uh, be very confident in the guys that are, that are going to play. I um, thought the guys did a good job last game, you know, going in there, filling in for the most part. You know, it was a little leaky at some times, but overall, I thought it was pretty good. Um, so, look, it's uh, next man up mentality, and, and uh, we'll go out there and get them ready, and they'll be fired up to play. How critical is David to what you do in there? For a, a lot of different things. One that um, he <laughs> – He's been around, I mean, seven years now together um, doing the same or similar type of things. And so when you have that continuity and, you know, he's he knows everything. What I mean, he's a coach on the field. He's done the fundamentals technique, you know, knows how to play the blocks. Um, and up until he had the angle, I thought he was playing as good as he's played uh, in his career. Um, he was all over the place making some phen phenomenal plays. Uh, but that also gives the other guys some confidence, you know, knowing that uh, David's story, how he how he started, how much he's worked, you know, like uh, Albert Huggins. I thought, you know, Contavious, you know, up until the, you know, those guys, um, TQ has gotten better. Like, you know, man for man in that in that position, the D tackles and those tackles, those guys have gotten better. They they see what he's doing, and hey, I can do that, they, and they'll talk. Practice is really really cool. Because we'll get into individual periods, and you'll see him talking over on the side, and, and he'll be discussing with some of the younger guys how to how to play a uh, Lakeel London, and you know things like that. And uh, it's helped out tremendously. Um, you don't have to. It, he knows so much about it, and knows how to play the position so well that he's helped <coughs> those guys and and uh, sped up the learning curve uh, by his conversations in this play. Based on my limited interactions with him, I was surprised when lots of his teammates said he is a maybe the best trash talker in the NFL. Obviously, that's something you've been around for a while. What, what, are, your, what, what are your review of him? No comment. <laughs> uh, I've heard um, some stories, but they're stories, so I don't know if it is to be true or not. <laughs> But he's here. Here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. One of the things I appreciate, David, is he's um, outside the lines, is as good of a person as you'll you'll be around. And he he really is. He's a good heart. He's a very good person. Means well. He's caring. Uh, all of those things. I mean, he really is. When he steps across those lines, he flips the switch. Um, been around a couple players that have been very similar to him. That have been really good. And uh, it, it what it makes him um, get in that mindset of how he plays the violence and the and you have to be to put that that particular position that takes double teams on for a living. I mean, you really do. You you, you take on 
700 pounds, you know, however many times a game and, and the, the violence. And, and so you have to be kind of in that mindset. And he walks across the line and he flips the switch and he gets right into it. And then after the game, you won't know anything. Like, you know, he just, he's David, you know, that he goes back to that. It's, uh, it's really cool. I, I, I really appreciate him. Um, and how he plays the game and just who he is. And the, uh, I love the guy. I really do. He's, he's, uh, he's fantastic and um, many more years with him. And, and he, he will continue to get better. He comes back from this. He, you'll, you'll see he'll take another step. There'll be more to his game that he'll continue to grow and progress. Uh, I think that we saw this year. You know, we talked about at the beginning of the year, you know, David still has another, can take another step. And I, I think he has. And I, Dave would probably say the same thing. I'm, I'm playing as good as I played uh, in my career. He'll come back and he'll take another step. And we'll continue to to uh, to talk about him. But um, it's very cool to see what he's done and continues to do. Arthur had mentioned that um, y'all have reviewed those late game drives and those recent losses. Um, I'm just wondering what your biggest takeaway was from Yeah, we can make a couple of different calls. Um, I mean that's the first thing. It, it always have always post game whatever happens, good, bad, or indifferent. I always look at myself and how I can help improve, make put a, put a player in a, a better position to make a play. So ultimately, it all comes down on on myself getting the guys, putting them in position, call a different call, um, and then ultimately, hey, let's go out there with some confidence. And 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 at the end of the day, it's it's. Like, let's go make the play, you know, that type of deal. But um, taking from that is, all right, hey, look, you know, could have made a different call last game, put us in a different coverage, you know, maybe some outside leverage with a cover two, you know, have a, a corner out there, played, played, not played man, played some more zone, things like that. Uh, a pressure, you know, so that, that's the main part of, you know, change a little bit more. It's not so much man play, maybe a little bit more zone, maybe a little bit more pressure. Each game is different, and so the flow of the game, um, you know, the first time, um, you know, in, in, uh, in, in the uh, Minnesota game, we pressured a lot early in the game, and so that was kind of the flow of the game and kind of went the opposite way. We pressured on third down, and we played coverage on fourth down. It's a different situation. Uh, you know, in, in the Arizona game, we pressured on third down and was going to pressure again. You know, so that, um, and then really this last game we played coverage. You know, th those type of things. And so we'll just continue to change it um, and play our best stuff. You know, play our best stuff. We, you know, we're, we're playing our best. You know, go out there and got to have it situations. Play play our best stuff on defense. Hey, Coach, um, what sort of different things do you see on film from obviously base Bryce Reed, um in week one, first game? And up to now, what are some of the different things that you've seen maybe that he's improved on or where he's different and what you had to plan for in the first game? Yeah, like we were talking about the run, running around, moving more in the pocket. Like that's been the biggest change is, um, you know, the particularly the third down uh, drive extender scrambles. You know, up the middle, he had a really good couple last game, up the middle, made a move on, on the linebacker, got out to the edge, got a first down, kept the drive going, things like that. Um, and then he's doing a good job of just kind of moving away from the pressure, finding the open guy. Look, down in Tampa, it was a monsoon. And so half the game, you know, it was a run game, a little bit different. Um, but he's, he's, he's extending plays, moving around, getting the first down with his feet. And so that, that's really the biggest difference what we're seeing. Last week, you guys ran a whole one quarter. Is that more just because you're very at linebacker, or is that something that you're or? Well, we, we've always had that, Mike, in the package. It's been, you know, we're, we, we're a shell team, the ability to play down safety right, and, and then um, different personnel groupings on third down. I think when you look at us third down, we've got so many guys that can play, try to utilize uh, the guys, uh, you know, specific skill sets you know, the best to help our team and our defense, you know, that, that type of deal. And so, look, last game we had three D linemen and one linebacker and the rest were DBs out there, you know. And, and so just changed the pitcher on them. And we still played pretty good on third down. You know, we got off the field. We, you, look, you want to be every time get off. 
off the field. That's not realistic. Uh, less than 30% would be out outstanding. You'd be one of the best in the league. You know, and we're hovering right around there. Uh, thought for the most part we executed. There's a couple calls you want back, a couple plays, the screen play we want back. Um, but one of the things we liked about it is we had a lot of speed on the field. And, you know, when guys were running plays down, making tackles, thought Mike Hughes had a nice tackle on a third and medium, um, really big play in the game. Then we had the fourth down stop right after that. Um, and so just getting those – look, again, in long season, we talk about de-tackle injuries. You know, the guy gets nicked up, guy's got a few snaps under his belt, he's comfortable going out there and playing and, and next man up mentality. And so just keep – and you'll keep seeing, you know, we'll continue to work this third down package and, and work the guys around in different spots. You know, you have injuries. Frank Lee had a linebacker too because he's short or way back in the three. Mm -hmm. Has this forced you, even though this has been really your first year being a full court handle, mm -hmm. has forced you to maybe be more creative than you've had to be in other spots in your career? Um, a little bit. But the other thing too is just the. Uh, <laughs> the importance of when we're in OTAs and we're in camp and I remember having a conversation with you all is look we don't have starters we have guys that you know we're gonna we're gonna rep the second team third team against our first and so just in case situations like this happen I thought Andre went out there and, and played one heck of a football game he had eight or seven or eight tackles I mean he was all over the place and he played really well Caden same thing you know playing um, and so look that's that's kind of just the philosophy of the head coach. You know, art is, hey, it doesn't matter who's out there. Let's get them out there, fundamentals technique with the scheme, uh, and put them against, you know, our best guys and, and have them go respond. And so if, if something like that happens, they're ready to go. Um, so I think that's what you're seeing a little bit, um, a lot. Um, but, yeah, and then there's some other things, and, and really like the depth that we do have at secondary, and it allows us to do a ton of stuff on third down. Mix guys up, move guys around. You know, our different coverage packages, whether it be, you know, three down, two two linebackers or three down, one linebacker, the rest DBs like we did last week. I mean, it's just – or four down and a, a linebacker, you know, things like that. Um, I think that's always hard to prepare for. Um, and our guys – one thing, Mike, our, our guys do a really good job. They're really smart. They can handle a lot of volume. And so if we present something new to them, they pick it up like that and, and, uh, and execute it. All right, guys, that's all the time we have. Okay, appreciate you guys. Thank you. I'll start with um, I got my special teams, uh, got a whole set of notes here. Well, let's go. Uh, Amir Smith Marset has been returning punch for them. How dangerous of a punt returner is he? He's really came on out of this season. You know, coming out of Iowa, he was mostly a kickoff returner. Started to do a little bit of punt return with Minnesota when he's with them. And then he's getting parts for their return units in Carolina with the big return that he had. It was a Thursday night game versus um, Chicago. Uh, he does a good job of making the first guy miss. He's fearless. He's gonna take he's gonna take chances on the football, whether the ball's on the ground, catching the ball in traffic. And he's had a, a quite a bit of 20 yard plus yard returns. So it's gonna be a great challenge for us because you got him to have space and open field with the ball in his hands. He's gonna get first downs for their, their offense to put him in great field position. So he does a great job out there. Okay, that was under Mayor Smith Marset. Uh, how is uh, the kickoff returner Raheem Blackshear and uh, some of the linebackers were talking about him in the run game also? Oh, yeah, Raheem, he, uh, he does a great job. I remember talking about him last year when we played him. He was a huge spark for them in the return game, had a couple of big returns last year versus uh, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And then this year, he's averaging oh, almost close to 31 yards per return. He does a great job. He's a running back as a returner, so he could break arm tackles. He has great vision, whether he's hitting the ball to the field or if he's cutting it back on certain looks. So he does a good job reading the coverage units, playing off of their core units blocks, whether it's Kruger Hill, Kruger Hill uh, Franklin, uh, Barno out there. Those guys are out there blocking for him. He does a good job reading off those blocks and getting vertical, and he's not afraid to take it out from deep. So Tabor's doing a great job with those guys there. And punter Johnny Hecker, what type of season does he have in the veteran punter? I mean, he has all the all the different kicks. You, you talk about the end over end. He could show one way, punt it the other way. He could switch it up to where he could find where the open gaps are. I have to hit the ball. Uh, he's a big athlete that just so happens to punt, and you know he he has the ability to throw the football too. So we got to be on um, all hands are on deck when it comes to going against that punter because he's a weapon. Whether he's doing it with his leg, 
whether it's punting, running, or throwing the football. So he's done a great job, and you could tell that he's he's locked in on all phases. Even when he's not on the field, he's locked in, and he's a big leader for that team and their core units. And uh, what's uh, Eddie Pinero's range? Where's he dangerous uh, from his line of 35 or back? He can hit it further back from that. He, he's, I mean, his last two years, you watch him, he's had a really good, really good last two years in the NFL. He's been a strong contributor for them when it comes to putting up points on the board and being able to, you know, kick off the ball on kickoff coverage. Uh, it's cool to just see, like, I remember last year during training camp, he led when we were going to join practice with the Jets. He was on that roster okay. and then getting the opportunity to be around him and see how he operates, how professional he is, and then to see the last two seasons, what he's done for Carolina. So he's had a phenomenal season. I think he's been really good at home. He, I, I don't think he's missed a kick at home. So it's, we got an opportunity, if we can, try to affect any kicks if possible. But he's doing a great job this year. Thank you. No problem. Yesterday, I think it was... Here's Trey Benson, right now said the kickoff's a dead play, the kick return's a dead play, and they're going to look to change it. What do you think that needs to change in the kick return situation at the moment? Um, that's kind of, I mean, I want to go through a full season before I give a evaluation over that. But right now, when you get into this part of the season, colder weather games, um, you know, it's an eight. You guys are playing 18 weeks in a season. You have the kickers; they're not hitting the balls deep enough. I think that play will start to come to life a little bit more as we get into this fourth quarter of the season, get into the playoffs. Now, what people want to do with it, whether they want a fair catcher or not, is going to be up to them. But I think for for me personally and for our phase, we we don't have enough reps to come to like a conclusion on how we feel about it. All I know is that if we get an opportunity, we're going to make the most out of it to put our offense in the best field position possible. And then as a coverage unit, if we get an opportunity to cover kicks, which we have the last couple of weeks, that we want to make sure we control field position and give our defense great field position. Yeah, I asked you this a couple weeks ago. But, you know, like you said, you guys don't have enough of a sample size. Mm -hmm. Is that going to change, you think? Or is the sample size going to just be like sample size is because of the strategy you guys are important. I mean, that's a hard question to answer, Mike, because I can't control how the other team kicks the ball. If the if another team kicks the ball and they hit it nine deep in the end zone, it's probably not the smartest idea, depending on the situation in the game, let's say it's opening kickoff, to take the ball out nine deep, because now our blockers have to block for that much longer. And if you look at a kickoff team, they start off spread out with the new rules. You gotta have two guys outside the numbers, two guys in between the numbers and the hash. So they're spread out. And they got to go cover the field, starting from the 34-yard line. So if you go kick the ball nine deep and I catch a nine deep in the end zone, we're allowing that coverage team to compress and constrict us using the open field for our advantage to get vertical. So the deeper the kick, the more opportunities they have to compress the field. And then now, yeah, we can have a bigger return, but where is our offense? Where is Dez and our offense starting with field position? And that's a critical part of our game. And that's something that we take a lot of pride in is our field position. So if there's an opportunity where CP's back there and he's make, been making great decisions, and I give him credit for that, because sometimes as a home run hitter, you could get frustrated with not getting the right pitch. But he stays focused, stays disciplined, understands this is a team game, not just an individual game. And if we get opportunities, whether it's this week, next week, the week after, whatever the case may be, we will be prepared for the opportunity to maximize it, all 11 guys doing their job, and we want to either score or set up a score to answer your question. What were your conversations like with Young Way after the last game? After the last game? I mean, it's, we, we're, we're process driven. I say this all the time. We don't get fixated on the results. Yeah, the results are real. Whether he makes kicks or whether he misses kicks, we stick to our techniques, <laughs> our fundamentals, our process, our intent. Our fundamentals are our edge each and every week. So whether he makes a kick, which the first one that he missed from 50, if it was an inch to the left, it goes in. If he hits that ball 19 out of 20 times, 19 of them are going in. It's just the ball just took a funny path, and it happens. The second one that he missed, he hit it a little bit high. But we stay fo fixated, and that one almost went in too. So if, if, even if he makes both those kicks, there's a th those are things that we talk about each and every week. But I love working with our specialists, and we're talking about Koo right now. He stays process driven. He's locked in. He understands that he equals points, and we got to put those points on the board every single time that we have those opportunities. And yes, he is one of the most accurate, one of the more accurate kickers in the NFL. 
but we're locked in to not just the res- we're not we're locked into the process, not just the results, because we got to take care of those little things, and those will continue to add to big results. We're interested in tearing in the gradual growth rather than the the instant growth and gratification. So those conversations are easy. We sit back and we watch every single rep, whether he makes 18 in a row, whether he misses 18 in a row which we don't want to happen, obviously. But those are things that we work on. We stay process driven. We have a great group of guys that all hold each other accountable. And we understand our our goal and our process and how we have to be able to complement each other on all three phases of the game, offense, defense, and special teams. How do you feel and handle essentially what would have been, you know, when you compared to other quarterbacks, like a full year of getting a starter now? Yeah, I think it's a good question. The comparison is you know, is hard for me because I do, don't like to get into the comparison game just because of different variables. But in terms of where he's at, um, you know, there's things that we build on. Like you look at him and the, the ability at the end of games, um, stretches of games, uh, in which there's a high consistency level. But that's right. I mean, again, not to cop out, but it's one of eleven, right? There's other parts that are involved offensively that need to um, play at high levels, all of them, right? Not just the quarterback. Um, but in terms of, is there always things that we're trying to look, grow upon, get better at? I mean, absolutely. I'm not going to sit up here and say, like, everything's perfect. There's things that we need to get better at, and that's just not at one position. That's all positions as coaches, right, putting guys in the best position. And so we accept the growth mindset to go out there and try to get better. Um, we do it every day. We look at something individual and say, hey, this is the one thing today that we're going to focus on an individual and get better at. Um, I don't think that ever stops. I mean, there's – I've been fortunate enough to be in this league and see great, like long-term 10, 15, 20 year quarterbacks who you see each year evolving and trying to get better. And that's what you love about this profession, not just as a player, as a coach. Um, every day is a challenge You go out there and, and try to get better than the day before. I think if that's the mindset, right, then you do get growth. It's not a straight line though. And I think that's the one thing I have learned um, for myself at this position as a player or coach is there is no direct straight path. Everybody has their own journey. The hard part about the journey for the quarterback in the National Football League, it there's no timetable that tells you, well, it just this player is just like this player, therefore you should get this. Right? There's been guys who started their careers who've been unbelievable. Right? And then for whatever reason, whatever variable, right, they don't have the same success their career continues in the National Football League. There's been guys, right, regardless of where they're drafted, don't have a great whatever start. And then by the end of their career, you forget about the beginning part of their career. You know, I think about, you know, my time in Washington, um, and you have very talented, very talented quarterback room and guys at different stages of their careers. And I was fortunate enough to be a part of that staff and that team at that time where, you know, by the time training camp was over, Kirk Cousins became the starting quarterback that year. People may or may not remember that year in 2015, but people sure know that, you know, there's certain players that evolve over time. And I think that's that's the hardest part about the quarterback spot is there is not just instant gratification at the position, because everybody wants the quarterback to play well, specifically that player. Um, but there are different timetables, there's different time frames, there's different variables. And so what we try to do is there's things you can control at the position. Let's make sure those are the things that we're, we're really good at. Again, when that ball leaves your hand, right? I had a coach tell me when I was young playing quarterback, he was a defensive head coach, and he said, when we throw the ball, three things happen, two are bad. You can take that approach, right? I'm sure you've heard that over your career. I mean, I'm just saying, like, reality is, right, when you go through it all, once that ball leaves your hand, you've lost all control. You've got to be okay with that. But the things that are in your control, the logistics part, right? Getting getting us in the best play possible, if that's what we ask you to do in that certain situation, great. Taking the right footwork, all the the things that have nothing to do with what the defense is doing, right? Can we be great there? And I think that's that's the things that we're, not just with Desmond, but Taylor and Logan and other guys I've coached and been been fortunate to do that. Like, that's what you're looking at. You're looking at the controllables first, not the the non-controllables at times. So how high is this? I think every week, right? Every week we're looking at that and assessing that. Okay, let's talk about the play, and not that we're breaking down every single frame. Every it's more about okay, the things that were within your control. How'd you handle those? Okay, um, 
How did you handle your decision making? What was your thought process? And it's no different at each position. I, again, I know the quarterback makes the decision, but everybody makes a decision on the play, right? The tackle makes a decision on a potential call and how he's going to block that individual, right? A receiver makes a decision on whether how he's going to release first press. I mean, everybody's got decisions. The quarterback has the ball in his hand every snap. I get that. But you're always talking through that, and you want clear, concise, definitive decision making. Because once you're gray, okay, then you're gray at the National Football League, you play a tick slower. When you play a tick slower, like, again, you're, you're going to have an inconsistent outcome. It doesn't necessarily mean, though, if you play fast, everything's great. That, that's not a direct correlation, but you can live with your decisions when you're playing fast. When you're playing in the gray, right, and you're not, cut, you're not really just sure what you're doing at times, well, yeah, then you're going to second-guess yourself, and that usually leads into more second-guessing, and then ultimately you don't trust anything, right? This whole profession at playing, in my opinion, is about trust, right? Trust your, tr trust your training, trust what you see, and have the ability to stay convicted by doing so. And again, when, I know the long-winded answer about Des, but every day, we're trying to go out there and get better at something. And if you're not, then you know, you're probably not gonna be long for this anyways. But it's no different. When two o'clock goes out there and they're doing QB center, it might be something as small as how we're taking that first step away from the QB and the center exchange. Right? That we're just gonna I mean, something doesn't show up in the stat book, but it can make your, your game more efficient. If you're more efficient, then you play better. I mean it's never ending. You're constantly, you're constantly searching for the challenge and trying to master it, but it's every day. Boy, that was long, right, Mike? Well, right? Josh was like, well, well showed up late. You get this question. I'm going to ask you a question. You, probably, you, know, you may just get the same answer, but um, when you're watching film on Mondays, do you feel like you leave the room more encouraged by the good things you see or more discouraged because they're not more consistent? Again, another good question. I don't know if I frame it that way, the way I look at it. You're asking me personally, yeah. right? Um, I think each play, right? And I was told this by a man I used to work for, still in this league, as a head coach. He goes, look, every offensive play is designed to score a touchdown. Every defensive play is designed to stop it. And so, yes, every time that something doesn't work, right, you go through the process of why. And every time something does work, you go through the same process. Okay, why did that work? And I think it's not necessarily in a negative or positive prism that you're looking through it as. To me, it's, okay, are we evolving? Are we helping? Are we giving our players the best chance as a staff? Are we out there making sure those guys are getting those? You can't get every look out there, right? This is what I love about the National Football League. We're playing a great defense, okay? In terms of what we think we may get, sure. But ultimately, right, they can do whatever they want. They could see us differently than they see their other opponents and bring a, either a pressure or coverage they haven't shown all year. So how do we equip the players for that, right? Then you have rules that they have to abide by when you're teaching plays or protections or run scheme. And you hope they rely, right? That's the part. They rely on their rules when they see something that, hey, I just haven't seen that before because it's never been seen on film. But when, I look, when you look at the film after a game on Monday, win or lose, it's a constant – are we getting better? Are we growing? Are the things that are hurting us, are we trying to eradicate and fix? And if not, right, we need to obviously do that. And I think when things are good, and sometimes players make plays, right? Sometimes a guy spins out of a tackle, makes two guys miss, and throws it 65 yards on the field. You're not going to see that in an individual that I've ever done, right? Some players just make plays, right? And I think that's the process, right? You're, you're asking yourself as coaches, are we giving our players the best chance? Right? Are we providing answers for them? And I think that's, regardless if it's a good outcome or bad outcome, I think you're always doing that. Yeah, you, you um, in the last game, I know it's not real simple for an answer, but uh, you all start off pretty good, minus the screen, and then you finish in the, the, the fourth quarter with two drives. How do you put, uh, right. put that play, put that together? I mean, Pitts makes a play, right Dijon, uh, London gets the jump ball, gets the big catch. That's kind of what yep. probably y'all have yeah, It's the consistency, right? Yeah. The four quarters. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, there's, 
you know, and that's part of the evaluation that you just asked. Like you're looking at those situations, and you're saying, okay, you know, I know early in the year it's like, and one of you guys brought up a stat, which was true, about the drive starts when we start a game, right? Like you brought that up, you had the information, okay? And again, we're we're constantly going through ways, right, to problem solve. And I think that's that's ultimately the business that we're in, player or coach at this level. You're in the problem solving business. So you're gonna be awarded problems that the defense, because they get paid and they're very talented and they got very talented coaches in every staff that we play. And they're gonna present problems. The question is, how quickly can you adjust? Or more importantly at first, how quickly can you identify what the problem is and then adjust to it? And that's it's what we try to do. Um, playing four consistent quarters. We, that's what we're trying to train for and make sure that we do. Why do things happen good? Why do things happen bad? It's back through the process of evaluation, evolving, having answers. But I think that's, yeah, there's no doubt. I think, again, I, I would argue that most teams, right, would sit there every, every, to every win or loss and go through the same evaluation process. I know on different staffs I've been through, you go through an evaluation process. Some are more tedious than others, but ultimately you want to find a way, right, to, to solve any issues and play more consistent for four quarters. And there's been lulls like last week, mm -hmm. um, and there's been great things at the end of the game, mm -hmm. right, in the fourth quarter. And that's, that's part of, okay, manage the fourth quarter. Okay, let's come out of halftime and, and have success in the third quarter or whatever it may be, right, to help us stay consistent. Under the... Um all 11 banner, uh, can you go through the screenplay for us? The interception play? Because I think. Yeah, I, I think. You can find three of the 11 that. Look, it's, it's uh, a play that um, I'm sure that you've asked the same question to, to others. Look, it's one of 70 some plays that we had in that game. Um, you go through the evaluation of why it happened, um, but it's, again, you're going to play a game, you play that many snaps, you don't want the, the bad plays to be uh, catastrophic um, because there's going to be bad plays that happen. And you go out here and you talk through it after what happened. You go out and you teach you know, that specific play as a, a play that we're going to you know, try to fix, and then you move on. And I think that's, that's part of the game too. Like, I think when you look at some of the things that happen during a game, there's going to be things that not exactly how you drew it up, an issue may occur, okay, but make sure that play, that, that mistake, right, if it is correctable, right, doesn't happen again. And so you go out to the practice field and you go through those things and you talk through those things. But, yeah, it's one play that um, is unfortunate for us offensively, you know, fortunate for them defensively, um, and we're trying to make sure that those plays don't occur for us offensively. Coming back to you said that, you know, I saw that nonchalantness about the one of them. I got it. I, feel, I felt both of you right there. At the end of the season, you guys have to make a decision whether Des is done enough to be your guy going forward. So have you seen enough to know where you guys Yeah, I, I understand where the question is coming from. For me, in my position and the role that I'm given, those are things I'm right now it's Carolina and it's a find a way to be a top five defense in the National Football League because they're really good and you know you hear me say that about defenses and I, I'm true about what I believe and when I sit up here and you guys ask me questions about the team events we're playing I've got such admiration for the different teams and different schemes um, this is a good defense my concern my focus if you ask me as a personal question is try to find the best way to put our players in position to beat the Carolina Panthers because we're going to need to find a way versus a really, really good defense. Can that, I mean, it's a silly question, but can the last four games of the year really change maybe that trajectory for Des one way or the other? Well, I think, again, I, I think the focus is here and now. Like, the focus on the Carolina Panthers. I, again, I understand all questions that you guys have, obviously, a job and duty to do. But for our world, it's about practice here in 25 minutes. That's a situational practice for us that we have to make sure that our players understand um, the important key points 
going into today, and we need to have a good practice. And, and that's really where it's at. I know it's probably not the answer any, you're looking for, but that's the truth from us. What's the biggest um, point of growth that you've seen from Drake this season? Well, you know, year two, I think you see a, and I think you see this with a lot of young players, and they're going in their second year. I think the understanding of a long season. I think when you're a rookie, you come in, you come off either when you're drafted or not drafted, but there's a whole, like, you're getting ready for the combine, you're getting ready for the draft, and then you get thrown into essentially OTAs. Um, you get a second year now, you now know what an offseason looks like. You get yourself prepared. You now know what a full training camp looks like. You understand that you're guaranteed at least 17, what that looks like. You understand what your body needs to go through, how you prepare yourself, not just mentally, but for the, the physical part um, of an NFL season. And um, I think not just him, but all the young guys who've gone into that transition second year or third year, right? you see the growth in, in how they take care of themselves, um, how mentally sharp they stay. They know how to now learn and prepare the night before that goes into the next day's planning. And um, I just think that's a natural progression. Some guys are better than others. Um, I think we're fortunate with the, with the, the younger players that we have, of how they accept that responsibility of being a professional and the standard of which that means. Um, and it's great to see.